Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Kelvin here. So, it's been a while since I talked about dividend stocks, mainly because I have been busy investing in growth stocks like Tesla. But I know that not everyone wants to invest in growth stocks where it can run up and down faster than your sergeant's armor. Instead, they prefer dividend stocks which can give a more steady from PP kind of returns. So, in this video, I will show you how I choose the best dividend stocks then, I will also share what are my top 5 dividend stock picks. But before I start, I would greatly appreciate it if you can help to tap the like button. In return, I will show you a cute bird. Alright, let's start right now. Okay, there are actually a lot of dividend stocks out there. If you check Vanguard International High Dividend Yield ETF, they have over 1,000 stocks in it. How to choose so? Here's the thing when investing in dividend stocks. Singapore IRS doesn't tax you on capital gains. Meaning, if you sell a stock and you quite bit big, IRAS won't come and take some of your money. On top of that, they also won't tax you on your dividend income. Good guy IRAS. On the other hand, US also won't tax you on capital gains. But, but, when you receive dividends, Uncle Sam comes and be like, I want some of that 10 days. US has a 30% withholding tax on your dividends. So, let's say if Coca-Cola pays you $1, Uncle Sam will take 30 cents and will only give you the remaining 70 cents which makes us sad sad. So, because of this, personally, I don't like to invest in overseas dividend stocks because I will lose a lot of money to taxes. It's better to invest in Singapore dividend stocks. Now, as to which dividend stocks to choose, in my previous video, I have shared my criteria, but I'll just quickly share it again. First, the dividend payout must go up over time. This is very important. Some companies keep paying the same amount of dividend year after year after year. If you work at the company for so many years and they don't give you any pay raise, ah, time to look for a job now. So this is the same for dividends. Dividends must increase over time. Second, the stock price must go up over time. This one quite straightforward. The reason you invest your money is so that your money can grow, right? If your money doesn't grow or even worse, you lose money, then obviously, it's a bad investment. Third, the dividend stock must have a normal dividend yield. Dividend yield is just a dividend over the current stock price. So sometimes, you will see companies that have a very high dividend yield, like First Street, which has a 15% dividend yield. Nice! While others only give like 4% dividend. Why ya? Yeah? If you go back to the formula, current share price is at the bottom. When stock price drop, dividend yield increases. If you check First Street stock price, the stock dropped from $1.20 all the way to $0.20. Cents. A good dividend yield would be around 2 to 6%, not too low and not too high. Using just these three criteria, you will filter out bad dividend stocks. From there, you can just research and easily find the good ones. Now, I will show you two good ways to find dividend stocks. I shared the first method previously, but I will just share it again. If you go to a blog called Investment Modes, click on High Yield Dividend Stock, you will find a whole bunch of stocks here. Copy it, go to a Google Sheet, paste it in. Make the first row as the header, right click the dividend yield column, then sort sheet A to Z. You will find that stocks that are not within 2 to 6% dividends won't fit my other criteria. For example, Semcorp Industries is 1.9% dividend yield. Their stock price has been going down over time. Or Iric Global, 8.4% dividend yield. Stock is basically flat since 100 years ago. After filtering out, you are just left with 29 stocks. You can just apply the criteria which I mentioned earlier to find the good stocks. So that was the first method. However, you might notice that bank stocks are not in this list. So I will show you another way to find good stocks. SGX has a stock screener website. I will put the link in the description below. Basically, here are a few criteria that you can use. First, have a dividend yield between 2 to 6%. Net profit can be at least 10%, meaning the company must be earning at least a bit of money. Yeah. Debt to equity, possibly 0 to 105. Then again, from here, you can research the list to find good stocks. So those were the two ways to find good dividend stocks. Now, I will share what are my top 5 favorite dividend stocks. First, DBS. Then you might ask, eh, why not OCBC or UOB? Yeah? Total Wealth has an article comparing all the three banks. If you check this out, you will see that in the past 5 years, DBS gave the highest returns in terms of price gain and dividend gain. But that doesn't mean all the other banks are bad, yeah? All of them are still good. But if I can only choose one, I will go for DBS simply because DBS has proven that they can give a better return compared to the other banks. DBS gives around 2.7% dividend yield currently. Dividends have been going up over the years. Stock price has also been going up over the years, even though in 2020, the price dropped a bit. Because, you know, pandemic. 
but it quickly recovered after that. In 2021, DBS was named the world's best bank and the world's best digital bank by Euromoney. The reason DBS won was because they were able to keep improving and keep coming out with new products. By the way, it's not the first time they have won. They have been winning awards from 2018 up till now. Going forward, DBS is looking to expand their growth in China and India and is coming up with their own crypto exchange platform. So probably you can finally buy a doggy coin with DBS yeah. As long as DBS continues to improve itself, its dividend and stock price will continue to go up because stocks. Second, Maple Tree Logistic. This is my personal favorite. Dividend yield around 4%. Similar to DBS, dividend has been increasing over the years. Stock price has also been going up. In fact, over the past 5 years, the price went up by 100%. If you check the earnings report, their gross revenue, net property income, and dividend has went up year on year. So, their situation definitely improved since the pandemic period. If you take a look at the assets, it's spread out across many different countries, with the most being in Singapore and Hong Kong. Occupancy rate is super duper good, with the lowest being only at 96.2%. The tenant list expiry is also well staggered, so you won't have a year where suddenly a lot of tenants leave and they don't get any rental income. Currently, they have around 753 tenants. All of them are from very different sectors, like fashion, apparel and cosmetics, consumer staples, automobiles, healthcare, retail, and so on. So in a way, they are like a mini index fund. By the way, do you know what a good rig is like? They are good at one thing, acquiring new assets. If you check the newsroom, they are buying new assets almost every other month. The more assets they can acquire, the more rental money they can collect. And investors will quite big big. Next, Maple Tree Industrial. Yep, another read related to Maple Tree. Dividend yield of 4.93%. Dividend increasing over the years, stock price going up steady from PP. As usual, gross revenue up, net property income up, dividend up. So the difference between Maple Tree Logistics and Maple Tree Industrial is that Maple Tree Logistics tenants are mostly in F&B, fashion, consumer staples. On the other hand, Maple Tree Industrial tenants are mostly industrial related stuff like data centers, telco, engineering machinery, stuff like that. The other difference is that while Maple Tree Logistics has assets in many countries, Maple Tree Industrial only has assets in Singapore and US. The tenant's occupancy rate is around 94%. This is very well staggered. Like all good risks, Maple Tree Industrial is super active in acquiring new assets and upgrading the existing ones. For example, not too long ago, they bought 29 data centers in the US. Similar to Maple Tree Logistics, I have a lot of confidence in Maple Tree Industrial and believe that they will continue to do well in the future. Next, Ascendas. If you live in Singapore, chances are you have passed by one of their buildings. They have business and science parks, data centers, factories, and logistic buildings. Fun fact, Grab's headquarters is owned by Ascendas. Besides Singapore, they also have assets in Australia, UK, and US. Ascendas dividend yield is 4.83%, and similar to previous dividend stocks, Ascendas dividend has been going up. Stock price has also been going up too. Gross revenue went up, net property income, and dividend went up year on year. Occupancy rate is slightly lower, but no worries, this is still quite healthy. If you check the activities, they have been busy buying properties, upgrading existing properties, and divesting some properties. Currently, they have about 1,530 tenants, a lot more than the other REITs. The tenants are from all kinds of industries, like data centers, technology, engineering, and so on. Again, this expiry profile is well spread out. Ascendas is definitely another top tier dividend stock to own. You won't go wrong with them. Fifth, Capital Land Integrated Commercial Trust. Recently, this happened. You got a Capital Land Commercial Trust, you got Capital Mall Trust, uh, you got CICT. So after the merger, this rate became the biggest rate in Singapore in terms of market cap. Currently, the dividend yield is around 3.2%. There's not much dividend history because of the recent merger, but both Capital Mall Trust and Capital Land Commercial Trust were both very good rates. If you check the stock price, before 2020, the price has been going up. But after the pandemic, the price has been flat till now. But I foresee that in the next few years, as we finally open up, more and more people will go to the malls to go shopping. And also, more people will go back to office to work. Possibly lesser work from home for you guys. Let's look at the earnings report. Gross revenue went up, net property income went up, dividend went up. Like I mentioned, everything is slowly recovering. Occupancy rate is around 95%. Most of their tenants are retail, office, F&B, and financial sector. You know, stuff that you normally find at shopping malls and office buildings. Their list as salary are well spread out, so no worries here. Compared to other risks, CICT didn't acquire any new assets recently, but they were busy upgrading their existing assets. However, there's one thing you need to take note about CICT. 
they have 96% of assets in Singapore and remaining 4% in Germany. So CICT is not that well diversified in terms of country. These have both good and bad points. The good point is the currency conversion risk is very low. So they earn SGD, they pay dividend in SGD. But the downside is that if Singapore continues to extend the lockdown, then CICT will be badly affected. Personally, I believe that CICT will continue to do well as Singapore slowly opens up in the future. So that was how to find good dividend stocks as well as some of my favorite dividend stocks. What other good dividend stocks do you know of? Let me know down in the comments below. Like, share and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday and Friday.